I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us and listening to what we do. We appreciate your support and your prayers. And today uh, is actually going to be the first of two parts. So our pace may be a little bit different than, than you often are. Uh, and some have mentioned, gee, I wish we'd have heard a little bit more. And I just felt like this, uh, this guest is, has got some interesting aspects to the story. And I think you'll find that to be true. But again, the pace will be a little bit maybe different than, than we've done in the past. So hang on and we'll get through these two parts. And so we appreciate it. And I'd like to now introduce Sherry Filos, all the way from Tennessee. She's come here to, to be interviewed and to share her story. And I'm so happy to have you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you coming all this way and, and sharing your story. Honored. Yeah, oh, well, thank you. Now, are you, uh, were you born out that way or are you no, from the West no, here? No, I was born in Murray, Utah. Right here in Murray. Yeah, okay. Murray Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, I guess we usually ask, are your parents, were they active members uh, they of the were. church at that time? They were at the time, yes. So you're born in the covenant, as yes. we say. And raised on Guam, though. Oh, you went out there? Yeah. And your, parent, your dad was? Father taught school on Guam. Military? Oh. Just, just taught school. Taught school. Yeah. Okay. Mother was a stay-at-home mom. Okay. And how many children? Or how uh, many? Six children. I'm the second oldest of six. Okay. And yeah. all active and parents were active? They and, were. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For a while. <laughs> okay. How long were you out in Guam? Uh, seven years from okay. about 1968 to 1975, around yeah. there. Approximately. Okay. So, and uh, primary, I guess. Oh, yes. I remember uh, building our chapel. That was back when... In Guam. Yes. We helped build the chapel. That was back when there was a building budget and all that yep. kind of stuff. And wards yeah. were responsible for providing a certain amount of labor. Sure. Oh, yeah. boy. Things have changed a little bit that way, haven't they? Oh, yes, they? they have. Yeah. Interesting. So you come back here to Salt Lake then mm -hmm. again when you... you uh, Came back from Guam? Yep, family re relocated to Salt Lake. Um, father taught school for a while and then got a job as a salesman. Uh, it's hard to raise six kids on a school teacher's salary, yeah. I'm sure. Now, your mom worked for the church, you were telling me. Yes, mom wrote primary books, helped. There was a committee. She was on one of the committees to help write primary, primary books. Primary lesson manuals? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. She worked up at Did the church Did she have some interesting building. stories from that? No, she was, uh, I was pretty, I was young at the time when she did that. Yeah. And she was not in the church too much longer after she was in the committee. Um, what and it wasn't because. Of that? What? Was it something that happened No, there, no. And I think just coming to know some people who knew more about the history of the church. And that affected her. Interestingly enough, from the church office building, oh. yes. It, it affected her <laughs> her belief in uh, the, what the church gave as its own story. Oh, yeah. there is a difference. And she noticed that. Oh, yes. And did she ever talk to her husband about that? Or did well, he, was there, he aware of it? Um, my father, no. And I don't, 
at the time they were having trouble in their marriage. Oh, okay. So it uh, turned into a very sort of volatile divorce. Oh. And dad stayed in the church, mom left the church. Were your children, kids aware of it? Children stayed with mom, yes, oh. because uh, we stopped going to church. And mom would talk openly about uh, certain things. Um, and our lifestyle changed. Oh. Everything changed. <laughs> when she left the church, she yeah. took advantage of the opportunities that the yeah. church had. Yeah, yeah that was a tough time. Oh. That was a really tough time. Yeah. Were um, you going to young women so at all? Did I you... had friends in the ward, uh, and I stopped going altogether. Would it, I, we would go? I would go. Indiv you know, occasionally yeah. by myself. Well, you mentioned road shows. And oh, well, that was before. Yeah. That, oh, was that was before, was before. the divorce. Oh, okay. Yeah, before then you it took was... took some seminary. Took some seminary. Yeah. And about halfway through my high school career, stopped all seminary, uh, had a few word of wisdom issues. <laughs> uh, it was a situation where there were no more boundaries at home. And I associated leaving the church with adult bad behavior. Okay. Let's put it that way. So as even... So you felt grown up, maybe? Uh, <laughs> I, I miss the structure, but yeah. not so much that I would go back. I mean, what teenager is... Yeah. Most teenagers wouldn't. Who wants to sit there for three hours? Unless they I have think. some kind of support. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. I was inactive for about yeah. seven years. Okay, so you leave high school, you're inactive. I'm inactive, okay. yeah. And I went to Weber State College for a year as an inactive. Okay. Um, let's see. Now that didn't actually turn out to be the best of experiences. No. Yeah. No, I worked at a restaurant late into the night, didn't have my own car at the time, and I would come home smelling like smoke. And, and that wasn't because I smoked cigarettes. No. It was because at the time you could smoke inside restaurants, if you can imagine that. Yeah, yeah that we used to, or they used to do that, yeah. Right. So my roommates assumed that I was out there smoking and drinking, which I wasn't. I was working because I was paying for my school all by myself. I went yeah. to school full time and worked full time to pay for school. <laughs> now, did you explain this to them, I guess? Or? I didn't understand the extent to which they judged me uh -huh. until they reported me to. Uh, the person that was over the dorms, the dorm mom or whatever, the dorm RA. Now, did they have LDS standards? At yes. Weber State? At, they did at the time. Wow. Um, you couldn't have uh, the opposite sex in the in the girls' Ooh. dorms, and you know I get all that, but yeah. it uh, when she came to me with their accusation, I burst into tears and I said no. No, that's not what's going on. And I explained it to her. You know, yeah. I'm working. Um, I'm, interesting. And, I'm paying yeah. my own way, yeah. full, the whole way. And I, I decided soon after that to quit that job and get yeah. one right close by the at school. Ernst Home Center. Yeah. yeah. And so I could walk there okay. and continue working. But, yeah. Okay. yeah, that was tough. Yeah, I'll bet. So what happens after Weber State? For a year that you were there, and then, then yeah, what happens? Yeah, went to uh, the Grand Canyon, North Rim, worked the next summer with uh, a friend of mine, and that was fun. That was great fun. And that's where I met, uh, ha that's where I had my first encounter with born again Christians. <laughs> At Grand Canyon, yes, yeah. Yes, and uh, they decided to try to convince me one day that the Book of Mormon wasn't true. And that Joseph wasn't a prophet, right? right? And I just wanted to cry. Oh. It was tough. That was tough. Uh, probably not Did the... Did you defend him? I didn't Can... know what to say. Oh. I'd never had that happen before. I was caught totally off guard. Uh, I knew them. They seemed like very nice people, and I was flattered that they wanted to sit by me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Especially after we were stayed. Hey, somebody likes me. Right? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was an interesting experience. Um, I think, you know, going forward, advice I would give for Christians is that's probably not the best tactic. 
Well, yeah, that's not to, to, to throw that kind of negative stuff well, out Well, at a there. young person, anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What would be a better tactic? A better tactic would be, hey, what do you know about the Bible? Would you like to do some studying together? Yeah. I would have said, sure. Would you? Sure I would have, because yeah. I had a scholarly mind. I had an inquiring mind. Yeah. I wanted to know things. Yeah. And, you know, that came out later on. But. Now, did you have a testimony, would you say, of the church? I don't know how deep your knowledge would have been at this point. I had point, a testimony but... that God existed. I believed I had a testimony the church was true, but I didn't have anything to compare it to, and I had no other information other than seeing my family fall apart yeah. and noticing that when we were in the church, the family seemed to be okay. When we left the church, the church, it, kind of it fell. fell apart. So there and was so, a little fear of, okay, I can't go too far right. this way. I need to hang on to this church because that's the only foundation you really yes. had other than your faith in God. Right. You always had that. Yes, I always had faith in God. I knew God existed. I could not deny God existed. Yeah. Um, and I and occasionally I went to church still, occasionally, yeah. not all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so from that point... At, I, we, uh, at Grand Canyon? At the Grand Canyon. Oh, okay. Um, I was in touch with a friend, a uh, friend from high school. We went to the same ward together who was working for Danny Ainge as a nanny in oh, Boston. back east. Yeah, okay. Danny Ainge, uh, of course, played for the, yeah. the Celtics. And she had gone from that family to another family, getting more money and better benefits. <laughs> and, and, she, and I spoke with her, and she said, hey, you should really come out here and do this. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? I do not want to spend my school year next year working full-time and going to school full-time. I'll work and save and then go to school. And so I decided, well, let's just get out of Utah. And, uh, and so you did the nanny thing in, did the nanny in thing. Massachusetts. In Massachusetts. I went to work for a person. You don't need to say their name. But okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. a person who was a well-known local celebrity, but I didn't realize it at the time. Oh, okay. I, I did not realize Christian, it. Mormon? Uh, Catholic. Catholic, Catholic. okay. Uh, nice family, good family. Uh, I felt comfortable with the family. They Safe felt comfortable and, with me. Yeah. I, I loved the kids. Oh. It helped heal me to some extent, being really? with the children. Seeing a family setting. and. Mm -hmm. you know. Did yes. you go to church back there? Occasionally. Yeah. Still now, were you you were still in that seven year period of kind of inactivity type thing and um, yeah yeah I was starting to have friends that were LDS because there was a group of nannies that were LDS. Uh, that, were most of them from Utah? Yes, because you guys kind of by word of mouth, I guess got because I know there were other people of done the nanny thing back then. It there, tended right? to be a trend at the time. And they liked LDS people because of their uh, um, morals and, yes. their, and their standards. Yeah. Yes, and the, and we were trained how to take care of children, pretty much. Yeah. Well, yeah, most come from, and you would have with, with several siblings. Being second oldest you. of six children, <laughs> yeah. yes. And the first girl. The first girl? Second, second girl. girl. Okay, the first girl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I uh, enjoyed that very much, and after the first year and decided to come back to Utah okay. and go to school at the University of Utah. Okay. I had been there for a semester and I found out about their exchange program to the University of Massachusetts, well, UMass that, Boston. That picked up your ear because you'd been back there, right? Right. Yeah. And I thought, I would love to go back there. And this is how I can go back there, continue my education and pay Utah tuition. So it oh, seemed like a win-win. that's how they do that. Yeah. Because it would have been more expensive. A little bit. Probably not that much but, more, but, but it was a selling for, point for me. Not a foreign exchange. You were called uh, out of state. Ex right. Rather than in state. Right. So There's the no tuition. way I could afford to pay out of state tuition. Right. There. Except for this exchange program. Right. So did you nanny back there again? Well, my, my old employers found out that I was Coming. contemplating this. Coming back. And they said, hey. We will work around your schedule. Aww. We'll find daycare when you are in school, and as soon as you get home, you're with our kids. We'll give you a car. You can go to school. I think they even paid my tuition. I mean, they just really made Provided it so easy for me. Provided a car and everything. Yeah. Just, oh, that's yeah. so sweet. And worked with you and your schedule. Yeah. And... Yep. So you went to UMass then? I went to UMass Boston yeah. for a uh, semester. Oh, okay. And then I decided, you know what? I just want to 
work and hang with my friends for a while. I should tell you the story about the kitchen, remember? The, the, oh, yes. Yeah, the yeah. interesting story. So there was one day I was making my famous fried burritos. <laughs> yeah. And I had to go run and go change a diaper. Suddenly I noticed uh, the smoke alarms going off. Kitchen is in flames. I had left the burrito in a the burrito. hot oil. Yeah. And burned some of the kitchen down. <laughs> <laughs> so we're outside. And I'm wondering why my employer is not more <laughs> upset. Come to find why out. Why am I not I, being fired? <laughs> right. I, mean, I was convinced they were going to fire me. It was all over. Come to find out they were going, they were in the process of putting in a new kitchen. It was going to go in in two weeks, and now it was getting paid for. So <laughs> <laughs> That's why they weren't upset. Huh? Right. <laughs> Got a new kitchen out of it. <laughs> right. Did the smell get through the house? or? Was oh, that, it didn't matter. They uh, knocked out that wall anyway, so oh, it was fine. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So did you stay back there then? And Yep. I worked for them for another year and a half. Wow. And then I got a job at Berklee College of Music Oh. in the financial, not financial aid, but they call it the bursar's office. They don't have that quaint term out here in Utah. Yeah. It's more just where you pay your bills. like registrar's office? Uh, similar no, to that? no, that's... It's where you pay your bills. Oh, they keep track of, yeah. Or yeah, okay. yeah, I guess you would call it billing or something. But So uh, where were you at with the church? And Well, at well this point? where was that with, from, with the church? As a nanny and all that time. I and, got more or less active depending on the month. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't that active. But there came a point... But you consider yourself a Mormon. Oh, certainly. absolutely. I mean, there was... Absolutely. And any time you did something that wasn't kosher, as they might say, then you've probably had guilt and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and, I, and I would say I probably went to church twice a month. Oh, okay. Which, as a young person, being yeah. out on your own, that's not bad. Yeah. That's, you yeah, know, pretty good. That's not a, now, you mentioned earlier that, that you'd been on a, gone to a Bible study. Was that oh, back yes. in Massachusetts? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so when I was going to UMass Boston, I saw a note up on the board about a Bible study for students. And I called the number and I was hooked up with a pastor who had a student that connected with me. And, the, and so we set a date to get together and study the Bible. And what prompted that? Just did you feel like, okay, I need a little religion in my life or what? I felt like I didn't know enough about the Bible. I wanted to know more. Which is probably true of a lot of Mormons, is that yes, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yeah. And, uh, but again, it didn't turn into so much of a Bible study as much as it turned into a time for them to use the Bible to show me that the Book of Mormon wasn't true. And I'm oh, sitting... they were through another tactic that yes. doesn't work so well. Right. Okay. And, and I just felt like saying, no, I just want to study the Bible with you. Yeah. I, I don't want to talk about the Book of Mormon. I just want to, let's talk about the Bible, right? <laughs> but I didn't meet with them again, and so we didn't get very far. Oh, so, so it was a little disappointing. Yeah, way. it was. It but was it did teach you maybe, I mean, you're holding on to this Mormonism, and you feel like that's your, that's your foundation, and that's what you believed. How, how did you feel about Jesus and, uh, and, the, and the Bible, I guess? Is, did you I, feel like it was I trustworthy? I wanted to learn more. Okay. I wanted to learn more. I'm going to have this move in, Oops, sorry. inside. No, ju I'm not okay. sure if it's making a noise or not. But So you just, I mean, you were studying the Bible. You were you learning like, things that I kind of surprised like you? I didn't know enough. I was reading the Bible on my own and feeling inspired. Yeah. But I didn't, I, I just didn't have the motivation to seriously study it all the okay. time. Okay. Otherwise, I might have at that point. But... Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so what happens after this? After your nanny time? And so after the I met a young man. And this is, this is a time where I was really asking the Lord for strength to live what I believed was right. And is live, this in Massachusetts? Again, yeah. Still? Yeah. And I didn't want to get married. Uh, I was terrified of getting married, was actually. Was he LDS? No, he wasn't. Okay. LDS, but I was prompted beforehand that I was going to meet someone and that I should be getting ready to get married 
get ready to get married a because prompting that you felt yes. was inspired. I guess yes, and, yeah. because it it uh, didn't come from me. It wasn't on your mind. No, in fact, I laughed and yeah. I thought, well, that's ridiculous. I don't know anyone I'd even want to marry. <laughs> so, a uh, situation happened where uh, met I met somebody at work and uh, went on a few dates. And both of us, on our fourth date, felt like uh, we should Something get married, right. and which and what, was very odd. Was it was very religion? strange. Catholic. Catholic. Yeah, he was Catholic. Now, and I you, had been oh. warned my whole entire life not to marry anyone outside, outside the church. Outside of the church, well, sure. Not to even date and anyone. And to even get married in the temple, well, obviously. The it was church. a goal, probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so did you I'm, think I'd convert him? I, you know, I didn't worry about that so much. Oh. I just prayed that the Lord would help me feel okay about just getting married because yeah. I did not really want to get married. Well, especially if you'd seen your family kind of go through their struggles and stuff with... Right, yeah. right. So I had the comforting assurance that everything would be fine. <laughs> and Feelings, um, as yes, it is, yes. Okay. Yes, and, and we got married. And, with, and I told him, I said, look, I'm going to go to church every Sunday. Whether you come with me or not is up to you, but I'm going to go. And I would really appreciate it if you would take the missionary discussions, okay. not because I want you to be baptized, but because I want you to understand what I believe my beliefs, and, okay. my belief system. So you recommitted then to go to the to go yes. to church to, regardless of what he did. Yes, I ha and I had recommitted right before I had that, feeling yeah. like or you know that, that the I marriage was, is going to happen yes yeah. that there was someone coming along that I needed to be ready oh. to meet and did he uh, he did eventually convert with we got married in November he was baptized in February oh, and a year later and a year later we went through the Salt Lake Temple and we were married How, what was that experience like you um, hadn't been through the temple before no, that had you no okay it was when there was live acting Okay, and was it before 1990? Yes, live acting and the disemboweling motions were still in the ceremony. <laughs> so was that a little disconcerting? I was in there thinking, really? hmm, <laughs> that's kind of odd. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, you know, I tried to focus on the positive. Well, and I think we all do. We kind of ignore those things. That I'll understand it later as I go through more and more. So right. That's kind of what you think, I think. Right. Yeah. It was my only connection to Jesus. It was my only connection to God that I knew the, was through, through the, the Mormon church. church. Yeah. Right. And so, and again, it was my understand. It was my security. Yeah. Was know? he your older brother, Jesus, at this point? Uh, I I knew I knew him as as God. You really? Felt I knew that? him. As, yes, I knew him as. Did you know Mormon doctrine taught that he was your brother? Yes, but that I. Brother, in um, in a spiritual sense, right? Uh, not he. He certainly wasn't on the same level as me. At least I didn't consider him on the same he, level. A higher level. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he was my savior. He was my redeemer. I understood the atonement as much as I could at the time. Yeah. After all, I could do. I mean. You knew that it was still dependent on you to get saved. Yeah, and I think at this That's point. That's why we go through the temple. At this point in yeah. my life, I was a lot more focused on grace, but I didn't know it because I didn't know all the rest. It took a while for me to understand deep Mormon doctrine. I didn't know deep doctrine yeah. as a teenager. Yeah. And so I think I took it on faith. I took grace on faith, but I didn't know what grace was. And it wasn't until later on as a married woman that I began to feel burdened down by this list of things that I had to do mm -hmm. and that I had to accomplish because it was all on me. Yeah. And that's when I started feeling the burden of the church doctrine. But at the time when I became active again, I'd been act inactive for seven years and I had gone inactive about age 15 mm -hmm. or 16. So it had been a while. Yeah, so I, didn't, yeah. I was a seminary dropout. Yeah, okay. I didn't understand a yeah, lot. a lot of Mormon doctrine, doctrine. or history. And that right. Kind of, yeah. Well, so you um, are married now for 16 years. I was, yeah. You have four children. You adopt one. Yeah. 
was that a, a um, how do I say that? Was was that uh, fit into the family well? The, the adopted. Um, and that's maybe a whole story we don't need to go into. It, it's but a beautiful story, actually. Oh. It's another miraculous story. Yeah. I uh, almost died having child number four. Oh. And on the way home from the hospital of having child number four, there's a certain condition where women have, um, to you know, they they lose their blood clotting factor. Oh yeah. And I almost you lost that. Yeah. Blood. Yeah, I had I had about a gallon of blood oh, boy. Uh, with child number four. So on the way home from the hospital, and they had to give me a, a partial hysterectomy to save my life. Oh boy. Yeah. So on the way home, I'm thinking, I know there's supposed to be another child come to our family. It was a boy, and I knew that. Oh. I don't know how I knew that, but I knew that. And I just said, I don't know how he's going to get here. And I can't but think it, about it, that right it now. It can't be me, but okay, right? you just trust God. I just thought, God, you're, you can do anything. It's up to you. It's on you. If we really are supposed to have another boy, you just felt like there it's was gonna have to, one. you're going to have to bring him to how us somehow. How old was he when you adopted him? Um, we found out about him when he was just born. Oh, okay. So it was a brand, brand new baby. So brand new speak. baby. Brand new baby. Okay. We got a phone call from a relative. Yeah. And I knew when we got the phone call that was the baby. And so you're very active. Your husband's active in this whole time. You go back to the temple off and on. You're uh, back off and now. On. Are you in Massachusetts now? Uh, in Massachusetts. And yeah. which temple do you go to? Washington D.C. Is that the uh, closest? For a long time, we went to Washington D.C. That's quite a trip. Isn't yep, it? it was. And then we got the Boston Temple. Oh, okay. And uh, I didn't go to the Boston Temple so much because at that point um, things were kind of falling apart at home. Oh, okay, with, the, yeah. with hubby and stuff. Yeah. Was that, that wasn't necessarily church-related at all. That was just life. Right. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't so, really church-related. Believe related. it or not, we're almost through. Are we halfway, I hope? Maybe yes, I don't know. Yes, I think so. I think <laughs> we'll we are. We'll see where we're at. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you just, let's, let's end on a positive note. Uh, you yeah. were talking about grace and works. Uh, w did you understand? You said a little no. bit about grace. Did you understand that much? No, and I had been an early morning seminary teacher. I had oh, back in Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, I had been primary president. I had been young women's president, and I had learned, of course, a lot more doctrine. Yeah. Uh, I taught. A, I taught Sunday school to the teenage yeah. kids. Yeah. And. Do you find those lessons were all topical? We're just about out of time, so I'll kind of break well, off I here. Well, I think the unfortunate thing about those topical, lessons is that they, they they didn't tell you everything. They only gave you bits and pieces. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, well, Sherry, you got a wonderful story and some more inter very interesting stuff yet to come. I have notes, <laughs> and I'm looking more than I usually do at notes. But yeah. sure, appreciate you joining us, and uh, we just have a heart for Mormons. You know, we we don't hate. Mormons, do we? No, no. <laughs> we love Mormons. No. I've got family in Morm as Mormons, and but Mormonism and the history and the doctrine. Hope you'll take a look at it. See you next time.